day 80, we're going to look at dealing with post requests. So dealing with forms directly in Flask. Okay, I've started off by simply making a page that was the HTML from the form I created last lesson, the name, email address, and favorite baldies selector. And we're going to see how we change that. Now, the important thing is, is that an app root has a method associated with it. So in this app root, there is no method. I wouldn't be able to post to just the website. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create an app root for this page. Now the page I've got, the page I've said that I'll send it to is slash process. So let's put that there. And then there's a key second argument to this root. And that shockingly, shocking no one, is going to be methods. It's almost like they planned this out and they use almost the same words in the same places. I know, crazy, right? But in methods is going to be actually a list of all the methods that this page supports. At the moment, we only know about post, so post is what we get. And that does need to be in capitals for it to work. I'm then going to define this and I now need to get access to the contents of that form. How do I do that? Well, very simply put, I need to import something new. I need to import requests. Requests are information that's going back and forth between web pages on our web server. And so we need requests to be able to access the data. Now, the only way to get to processes is via a post. So I need to have posted something to it. So all I'm going to do is return request. We import request. Request.form. Now let's just see what that does. I'm going to stop, I'm going to run, I'm going to fill stuff, stuff in. Now you can see what's been sent. That's the code for a Python dictionary, isn't it? And as it's the code for a Python dictionary, we know how to use this. We can do something with it. We could add it to a dictionary that we've already got, or we could customize a page based on that. We could even use ifs to decide what we're going to say. For instance, instead of returning that, I'm going to do my normal thing of making a page. I'm going to make form equal to request dot form so I can access these values and I'm going to return my page. And I'm going to have a very, very simple setup. If form baldies equals equals David page plus equals, I'm going to add to the page. You're all right. I'm going to F string this to put their name in it. Form username. You see also that in the printout, we've got that user ID, which was the hidden thing that we'd put in there. I'm going to use single quotes here to get around the quotes problem without the triple quote trick. Um, and that needs to be a username. But I'm going to have a big else. If they've picked any of the baldy, I'm going to tell them you've picked wrong, whatever your name is. So stop, refresh. Let's, call, let's put a different name in so it's clear. If I pick David, I get you're all right. If I pick anybody else, now I've got a completely custom page. This is really powerful because now I'm back to lesson two. If you remember all the way back to lesson two, when we looked at if statements and inputs and how all that worked together, I've got that power again. Now I can take input from a web page and I can decide what to do based on that input and replace the page they're getting dependent on what they've said. Common problems, by far the number one problem is this. We run it, everything looks tickety boo. We put our data in and we get our favorite internal server error. We have to examine the console a bit more closely to find out what's going on here. So let's pull that console up a little bit. And again, these error messages are horrible, but the last bit is request is not defined. What does that mean? That means I've simply forgot to import it. These things are not there by default you need to bring them in. So you need Flask, capital F, you need requests. If you want redirect, you need to bring that in as well. You need to bring these things in, otherwise you can't access them from elsewhere. The second common issue is just not having built your form properly. If you've forgotten names in your form, and I'll just go in and get rid of those to show you exactly what would happen. So I've removed the name and the email. If I rerun this now, when I fill it in, You'll see I'm now getting a bad request. I'm not getting any errors. 
And the reason for this is I'm trying to send data that doesn't actually exist there. So you need to have those name fields in, otherwise it can't make the dictionary and it can't pass the data on via that post command. Remember, we're always trying to combine everything that's within that form field, wrap it up in a dictionary and post it to the page that I've suggested in actions. I've broken some code, go fix it. Should be easy, hopefully. Your challenge today, go grab your login form from yesterday, connect it up to Flask, make it work. I would like there to be three valid username and password and email combos. You can store that in a dictionary like we did the other day. And I'd like you, if they are allowed in, to give them a nice page. And if they're not allowed in, to give them a really bad page to tell them off for being bad, bad people for trying to hack into your website. When you're done, publish it in the community and share it with us with a hashtag replit 100 days of code so we can see what you've done on social media. Tomorrow, you're going to build something legendary. You're going to build an I'm not a robot page. And we'll see if I'm a robot or not. Error 44, sarcastic comment not found. Thank <music> you.